Hello and welcome to another episode of Behind the Play. My name is Sam Perlox Carlson of SpawnRoom.com and today we're going to be taking a look at Team Fortress 2 uh, match analysis for some random game I just grabbed off of ETF2L.org. I think it's a part of their Season 15 um, TF2 6v6 League. Uh, the teams are Obodel versus something else. I'm not even really sure. But it doesn't really matter. It's just match analysis and looking at it, um, what they did right, what they did wrong, that sort of thing. Not, you know, match commentary or anything. So anyway, let's jump right in and get this going. Um, all right. So yeah, there you can see the player names in case you're wondering and you know who these guys are. But let's see. I want to focus a lot <clears throat> on um, these initial mid-fights because... I'm just going to kind of spoil it right here, but <clears throat> blue team does not do very well. <clears throat> In fact, they like lose every match. And uh, this one kind of ends abruptly too, so if that happens, that's expect that. Um, so let's take a let's try and figure out what the deal is. Like why why does blue team have such a problem um, with midpoint and then just falling all the way back to their point? And then basically just losing the match. So this first um, this first round here is a little weird because, as you can see, one of their soldiers was like AFK or something. <laughs> um, so I think I mean Blue's going to come in with a definite advantage right off the bat just because of that. Um, okay, so let's take a look. So the two red scouts came out aggressively, and they're looking for. Uh, pick on the demo. They're looking to control the other scouts. This one's jumping up here. He's going to be controlling this little bit of a lane. Um, this scout is looking for a pick on the demo just because he has potential to do a lot of damage by, you know, controlling that hut. Uh, but he is probably going to get intercepted by this other scout. So he's, uh, if he doesn't switch targets, he's probably going to die there. Um, so let's see. So the scouts are forced to fall back. Well, that one gets blasted out of the the battle arena. Um, and Blue is able to move out, and that's probably because they're down... I mean, they pushed a scout out, and they're also down a soldier, which is a huge amount of damage. Which is probably their roaming soldier, or what? So let's see what the position is like. So they, they've got three guys who are currently... They're going to be stuck in hut if they're not already. So they basically, it's basically like a, what, a f 5v1 right now against this scout. This demo should be able to do a little bit of damage, but if they suppress him enough, he's going to actually be caught off in hut. So he's probably not going to be able to do anything. So blue should be able to take the point very easily just because of the fact just because of the fact they didn't have all their players and it looked like they were delayed for this first round so that's kind of odd but okay let's figure this out now which soldier is this so this the the soldier that was afk i think that's him right he was He's going to choose to jump in. You can see the uh, blue team is really clumped up on the point right now. So he has the potential to do a lot of splash damage to a lot of players at once. They do have one um, scout that appears to be moving in. Another scout who's going to be able to get a kind of flanking position. So the scouts are actually reacting really nicely to this. Um, assuming he called out Mumble or, or Voip or whatever. Uh, you know, push out, push out. The two scouts will be in good position to do some serious, like, flanking damage. They've also got a medic who's up and almost has a full charge, so that will help them a lot. So, right now, Blue blue actually has the cap right now, and they should probably just fall back. They should already be falling back, actually. Just because they're going to be, especially with this soldier jumping in, they've got two heavily injured players... Yeah, because I'm this other soldier medic combo is probably just gonna push now. 
they're still really clumped up too as you can see so the scouts are able to get two of the picks there let's see what we got going on so we got one chase going on this demo demo should probably get away maybe not though the scout can do a lot of damage really quickly there so red was able to retake it and basically that was just because that soldier picked a really opportune time to be, to leap in and basically swap positions with his injured soldier buddy um, the two scouts were in great positions for flanking damage to come from the side and blue team was way too clumped up and they were down players so they really should have grabbed the point and just fell back to um, <clears throat> like their staircase and around the corner there and basically just try to hold them off until their teammates could have returned uh, for reinforcements but now they're gonna actually lose the point and they're down four players uh, the medic will be up, the scout will be up, but they're gonna be down two soldiers so they're probably gonna also lose spire because they're not gonna have enough damage um, to withhold it so let's see if this demo is probably gonna get picked too maybe and he does and now the medic is in kind of a dangerous spot to get picked up by the scout. But he's not going to go for it. Just because they're going to be able to grab Spire, why risk it, maybe? Okay, let's pause and just see. We got Spire Cap. The two soldiers are up. Um, I guess nothing to look at right now. Basically, they're just going to cap Spire and they're probably going to move into a position. And actually, they have an uber charge, so I would assume they're probably going to just push right away. Maybe. They should know that they have the uber advantage because they uh, they killed the blue medic not, not that long ago. I mean, it's only been like 20 seconds, 30 seconds maybe since he died. Okay, so they are going to push in, and let's see what the positioning is on blue for a defense. They, they do have a pyro, but I think he came in the wrong way. So the scouts are down here. Soldier demo are basically faced off. So they did the soldier hop down and the pyro. Let's see what, let's see what kind of damage he's able to do. So he's able to air blast the medic away and separate him, but he does get picked off by the demo. And red team is able to just push in. That soldier, I mean, even though he got disconnected from his medic, he probably took, he probably uh, didn't take a lot of damage at the beginning and was able to just push himself. Plus, they had the two scouts on the bottom that would have rush, rushed in, so. Not too much for blue team to do there. Okay, let's check the positioning again, because I'm curious about these midpoints, because blue just gets dominated here, it seems like. So their demo... They got one... Okay, so blue, blue team's got one scout below. Their demo's on bridge. Haha, <laughs> there's no model there. Red demo's gonna be coming below with one scout who's gonna get to the right side there. And the other scout is probably gonna go through here and down below or maybe just run along bridge and try and get a close up on that demo, perhaps. Let's see how this changed. How injured is this blue scout? Um, so he's not injured yet. That's good. Both soldiers are coming through at about the same time as where the red soldier's at. Ooh, this blue scout's going to get picked. So did they, they knew that that red scout was there, so his teammate should have called that. And this blue scout should be way more cautious about this position because he knows he should know that that red scouts there you know there's maybe like a 50 50 chance or something that that red scouts gonna jump up here rather than go below and his ally should have told him that um, they do manage to there should be able to control the door here and where are the red soldiers and medic Where's the other red soldier <laughs> there he is he's just like a pair of gloves and a face um, okay, so they know that the door is closed, so they're probably they're gonna move along here and try and get at least some damage off from a distance. So how is red positioning more advantageous? The demo positions are, I mean, 
I suppose the demo's out kind of by himself, perhaps? Hmm. Um, let's, well, let's just play it for a little bit longer and see what happens. So did that scout get picked? He did get picked as... So that... W so that first scout there should have been way more aware or cautious of that. He shouldn't have been going for these long range shots down the, um, like the train bridge here. He should have, he should have been watching this because that, I mean, especially since that other scout should have said it, he should probably just be doing that anyway. Cause he's not going to be able to get the most amount of damage. Um, uh, they do get the red demo pick and that was from the blue demo. So the blue demo's positioning on the bridge was probably, was I mean, it's probably naturally more advantageous because you have the upper upper ground, but the um, the red or the yeah for the blue demo and the red demo being below is probably more of a surprise maneuver. You know, you can't you can't see him when you're up there, so all you see are stickies flying over, and you're not entirely sure where to be shooting. So perhaps. Since the Red Scout controlled this section and was able to pick the Blue Scout, and they do have the soldiers coming through here, if the Red Demo would have stayed down here, he might still be alive and able to be lobbing Red Stickies up and continually do damage, or he could pass through underneath the bridge. Um, maybe, it depends. Where's the other Blue Scout? So he probably he couldn't have done that because the Blue Scout would have... Um, been there and if actually if the uh, red demo would have been down there he would have got picked as well unless the red scout is helping which he could have because he did get the early blue pick on the blue scout so he could have came below and supported the demo while the demo shot up um, so perhaps that would have been better positioning there let's switch to this let's see what we got going on here Ooh, I don't like that um so you can see a lot of fire coming in at blue right now. The blue demo and the blue medic. So they got the scout. Where's the other soldier right now? Okay, so he's the... He's that little mess of items hiding behind the train car right now. And that position... And let's, let's watch it from the scout here and just see. Okay, so blue actually manages to get two picks. One on one on the scout, which would have been here running up and died in the middle, it looks like. And then one on the soldier that was behind the blue card. So blue blue actually looks in good positioning here. The demo has moved to a more rear position because of it because he's injured. Blue has a medic advantage, but only a little bit, 9%. That red soldier is taking a ton of damage right now, too. So they should be able to pick him. What is this scout doing? Medic's still alive, good. So actually, blue positioning right now is looking pretty good. So they should be able to get him, I would hope. Or at least get him off the point. So they do get the the red medic pick. And they're able to get the cap, so. So I guess these first couple of rounds weren't too bad for blue team. They are able to control it. Um, they're fairly injured right now, so they need to be cautious about this spider push because their, their entire team is up. So it depends on this aggression here. And let's just take a look at the positioning. Positioning. So we got a demo below here, soldier. Uh, one scout who's going to be moving along the, uh, the catwalk there. Another scout, same position. So they do have a, the, I'm assuming this is the normal pocket, maybe it's the roaming that died. But they do have a soldier medic combo coming <clears throat> that are currently separated. And one scout. So they're all kind of away from each other right now, but red is going to be able to reinforce much sooner than blue is going to. And you should obviously be very aware of that. 
if suddenly red is pushing out into the yard, you should probably just fall back because the rest of your team's not the rest of your team's not there. Um, so let's just see how this plays out. So they're gonna jump up on the demo, and he gets picked immediately, along with the other soldier. So the two the two guys that basically rushed out right away didn't do anything. I mean, they didn't even get damage off barely. They basically just showed up. Started capping Spyro, got about what twenty percent and died. So that really that push right there was not was not worth it at all. They they definitely should have just waited for their team to catch up. If anything, they should have just stood out in the yard here, down here, firing at the doors, and basically just try and suppress red team, keep them from pushing out into Spire. Because yeah. The Ubers are equal, so that's good at least. But uh, they're going to lose, I'm assuming, this other scout too. Maybe both of the scouts. So let's see what happens. They do let, manage to lose both. Now red is going to be extremely aggressive because they can be. They have a huge player advantage. So they'll be able to cap mid. And they might get Spire. I mean, it's if blue, <laughs> blue, blue moves very quickly good at their rocket jumping and all that, so they should be able to be up here, and they are, um, but let's see, let's just check positioning quick, so red is moving out, one blue player has been picked already, and where was that at, the one soldier that was kind of off by himself watching the side, so he was probably positioned here, I'm assuming just, either he was falling back, or he was watching this section, basically just trying to control them so they don't do a flanking maneuver and come come to spire from this direction but they did send three players so that was smart of red team to basically overwhelm this side and it just that happened to only be defended by one player um so you know if you have good scouts or something and they're like this side is weak if there are close players you can respond quickly so you know if you're in the room i wish i could move while it's paused i can't move while it's paused if you're in the room that's directly in front of me there and you have a choice between going to the right or the left. If you go to the left, you re reinforce this area. If you go to the right, you come out into the yard. You might go left just so you can quickly support your teammates And because this side is weak. Let's see what else we got going on. Um, so the should be noted that the medic switched crits here, and he's going to have it much sooner than the uber on their team. And the positioning for these three players right here, I don't like this. Um, it's a very defensive positioning. As, as you can see, even a demo sticky is about to fly in here. Um, it's a, Yeah, it's a very like almost defensive position. They can run for the door really quick, but they don't have any high ground at all. It would be preferable if the other soldier had it tied and he was up there. Uh, maybe they should send the demo somewhere different. But they're probably... And this sort of position, they're probably just going to end up maybe trying to get some damage off, suppressing a little bit, and then running away because they're not in a they're not in a good position to hold or aggress. So let's play it out and just see. I'm assuming they're just going to run away, and they are. Oh, okay, so. They decide to go through the mid and come out with the crits. So that was a good, in terms of like a surprise attack, um, that's very nice. And I suppose they probably, maybe they sat behind Spire here simply to hide themselves and be like, may, you know, if they jump Spire, we'll have a demo right here that can hit crits. I can hit crits and he can crit sticky the Spire and we can get some kills. The soldier is obviously there to protect the medic. Um... But it looked like the red team knew they were there, so they came through and they busted out through the doors here with the, with basically a surprise crit, so that's really great. Um, unfortunately, and I don't, hopefully they had good communication, the scout, where's that other blue scout? Is he, oh, he's down. So this scout, it must have been this scout, who was on, on catwalk there, he should have alerted his team, like, right now, the... Like, either the demo should probably continue his, like, barrage right now, and this blue soldier should be t doing a 180 and looking up here because that uh, that scout should have said something like, hey, there's a 
um, soldier, their uh, soldier and a scout coming. If they blasted a rocket up there right now, they could get a double kill on them. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think that's what happens. So as you can see, they're trying to focus in. They get that that one soldier gets picked from above. This medic is probably going to get picked. He's already at half health, and there's a rocket coming really near him. Um, so that was might have been bad communication on their part. This really should have been warned. The one scout did get picked, though. That's good. And the medic does get picked. But now they they basically just have two people in the field. <laughs> and that cleans up blue. So red is going to get an easy cap on Spire. They still have four people up. And they're probably just going to move right on the yard. <laughs> or, <laughs> it's not in the yard, sorry. I was checking my phone really quick. Make sure it was on silent so it doesn't ring or something all of a sudden. So they're going to basically just hold this position for probably very short because they already have an Uber up, so they're going to want to use it right away. They know, I mean, the medic just died, so they're going to know that they're, they have a huge advantage. Blue is also going to be very aware of that. And we could probably just watch it play out because it's probably just going to be a rush on the last point and a loss for them. So they move in. Same kind of thing as before. They do have a pyro to try and uh, deflect it, but there's way too many red players that just overwhelm the point, and blue has nothing in terms of a response. So let's see. Let's move out to midpoint and just kind of see how the timing works for everyone. In fact, I'm kind of curious. Let's let's go to the demos. So the de actually, oh, you can't switch either. They need to fix this demo interface. Okay, so the blue demo is coming below and he's this far. Let's see where the red demo is at. The red demo is much further behind on their team. So that's interesting. The blue demo might just be better at uh, at uh, sticky jumping around and getting into good positions. Okay, so let's see what we got going on. The entire blue team has pr <laughs> pretty much moved below and now I, I generally don't like like this might be a good idea for red team since they're up 2-0 they can afford to sacrifice around and do something kind of riskier um, for blue team they might be thinking we need to do we need to mix it up and try something totally different um, to surprise them but this is kind of probably more risky to do in terms of the win rate because you're giving up any sense of the high ground at all i mean they have no high ground at all they're if red team aggressively moves out and takes bridge blue team is at a huge disadvantage in terms of the angles that they can hit um and they're going to know that right away because the scout came right out and he's starting to put damage on and he sees yes there are in fact all four of their high their uh, all, all three of their high damage dealing plus a medic down there <clears throat> So I really don't like that. So this one scout's going to be going after the other scout. So the right now, this hut is basically not suppressed. I mean, the demo, as you can see, is got getting some fire over here. But these guys are going to be able to probably move right out um, and onto the bridge. And they do. And now they have upper ground advantage. It, I mean, look at the angles they get on these guys. The medic is completely exposed right now. The other soldier did manage to move up, but this was, uh, you know, you can't really, it's hard to change it quickly because they're going to be out on bridge already, so yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't, I, this seems like a strat you would do if you're in the lead and you just kind of want to try something surprising to mix it up. So let's see, is there anything to check out? That one scout got picked. Who was the other guy who got picked? Their, their demo from below. So Blue's just, like, they're not going to be able to hold this point. They're, they're too much at a disadvantage. They're at a player, not only a player disadvantage, but a positioning disadvantage. They do manage, he does manage to get the medic pick, though. That's really great. So that'll help, um, 
pretty much after Spider here, because they're probably going to be able to catch Spider pretty easily. But they will have the, hopefully switch back to Uber, which he did. He will have the Uber charge over the red team. So they might be able to do something with that if they respond quickly. And let's see, where is he at even? Ooh, this soldier almost gets caught out. That would have been a waste. You know, you come in, you have this uber advantage, and then you lose a player, and it kind of negates it in a way. Or at least it neg uh, negates some of the effectiveness. Now, they need to... I mean, they're probably actually just going to save their uber as a defensive. Like, well, let's see what they do, actually. They might be thinking, let's save the uber as a defensive uber. Oh, no. That is unfortunate. That is a huge mistake on their part. That should not have happened. They should have just made a decision. Either we make a push right now and use this Uber aggressively because they're not going to have an Uber, or we save it, we just hold back, and when they Uber in, we'll have an Uber to um, defend with, which means that, you know, as the aggressive Uber, they're going to pop it first, most, uh, most likely. And that means that with the defensive Uber, you'll have, like, a a second or two of extra uber where you can try and get a pick on the red team and um, uh, basically turn the tides and go for a spire so but unfortunately that soldier rushed out and the medic hesitated the scout came in at a perfect window of opportunity and forced him to pop on last point so now now they basically reset the scales because by the time his uber wears off and he starts working up the other medic should be about out and they'll have basically an equal uber situation and let's see if we can see where that pick actually happened. So the demo's back there. They've got two scouts that are up close, but that looks like it's it. I wonder where that... So it actually looks like they died down below there. <coughs> um, so the soldier probably looked down and was able to get picks on him, so that's good. But... Oh, that would have worked so much better if their medic hadn't gotten... Uh, damage because they would have taken down I mean they would be down those three players and they would have a uber advantage that which means blue would easily easily be able to push out on spire take it push out on mid and probably take that as well but now they're probably going to end up just having to hold last point because of that mistake so that that is just like unfortunate So, let's see what happens. <clears throat> so, red team is kind of pushed out towards Spire, basically just to hold it, regroup as a team. But it doesn't look like blue is going to do anything. They're just going to hold last point. They're probably a bit flustered after that. Um, so, they're probably just going to build up a defensive uber now. And one of the scouts get picked by the stick. <coughs> stick easy, probably just rush forward. <coughs> I'm still getting over a cold well. Uh, let's go, guys. They're probably gonna. Are they gonna push out immediately upon Uber? They are. So they probably knew that the. Uh, the blue team uber had been popped they they must know the timing in their head and they said they're not going to have uber yet let's use ours immediately and that's what blue needed to do is they they had to make a decision either i mean i guess it was kind of a mistake though i don't know that medic should have followed that soldier right away although then again if you think about like how does that change the timeline the medic follows the soldier the scout shows up to basically do damage on them and now they don't actually get that medic soldier pick below because they're focused on the scout so maybe there wasn't a good the only maybe the only option was for that medic to not follow that soldier and just stay next to the spawn doors had he done that that might have worked okay let's check positioning again um 
So the red demo has gone below here, so he can basically get off surprise stickies. You can't see him very well, so he's basically just blindly throwing damage over the bridge. Um, it's a p positioning disadvantage, but it's kind of like surprise damage, so depending where the scouts are has probably variable effectiveness. Well, I guess everything has variable effectiveness, but... Um... Let me get the camera here in a better position. So, okay. We get one pick right away on a scout. Where did that happen? It was on one of their red scouts. Okay, so it was in the hut here. So basically, this is this on red or blue side? This was on blue side, so that blue scout basically, he actually did come up and was checking the doors, probably looking to the left like he should have done in the first round. Um, but unfortunately, a soldier followed him up, so they did like kind of a 3-2 split here. Soldier leaped up, they were able to uh, squish the scout in there and do some damage. Um, they can, how's blue responding? Blue's got one soldier to respond with to two players there. The demo's basically closing off the hut. But I kind of like... Hmm. I kind of like Red's positioning. This scout should maybe be somewhere more effective. He's kind of stuck down below doing nothing right now. This scout should probably be moving left to go help with the guys on the left there. Let's just see what he does. So it looks like he is going to try and go on assist. And they do manage to get a pick on a red soldier. So how, let's see. Uber charges are equal. Blue team is really squished up right here. But it doesn't look like there's anyone to do too much damage, except for that soldier jumping in. Where's their demo at? And their demo actually could do a lot of damage from down here. And they have a scout coming behind. So Blue's actually getting kind of caught out here. They're all squished together. They're basically looking like in a very defensive positioning. This scout is coming behind. He might be able to get a pick on the medic. Or at least maybe on one of these soldiers because they're really injured. This soldier is going to get caught out too. Because he's basically... It's basically him versus the rest of the red team at this point. So maybe if he's quick enough, he should just leap away. Um, but he's probably going to get picked, and he does. And now Blue's down two players. They're more injured. They should be falling back right now, but they're not responding quick enough. They really have to get out of there. No, and the medic moves forward for some reason. And he gets picked! <laughs> that was a blunder on their part. They should... Whoever is calling team strats there should have told the team to fall back immediately. After those two dropped and they're they're injured there and they're so clumped up. See, it'd be one thing, like, you might think, well, but they still got four players and it's their down a player, so it's 4v5, it doesn't seem too bad. But their positioning was horrible. I mean, they were all in one spot. That makes it so easy for the red team to just pile on a bunch of damage, especially when they control so much of everything else. It's easy for the red team to be more fluid, to move around, to be separated from one another and not take a bunch of damage together. Um, blue team... They should have recognized their position. They should have said, two, two players down, we're too clumped up, just fall back now. Um, but they didn't. They actually ran forward. That was weird of that medic and demo to do that. That was a mistake on their part, on both their part, really. Because even the demo shouldn't have done that. <clears throat> so we got one scout trying to help defend Cap, but it's not good enough. And... They are probably not going to be able to hold this, although the Ubers are the same. <clears throat> so let's pop this on demo time scale 2.0 and just get this moving. Because the last point here, is, to me, isn't that interesting. It's basically just to defend. Let's just see what that looks like. So Red's going to have the Uber earlier on. And they might just do the same thing where they push out right away because they know that the 
I mean, it depends on the intel they had, but they probably are suspicious that uh, blue team won't have a uber charge right away. Blue comes in. And actually, they do get the uber off. It did, did manage to work up fast enough, so blue is able to do a successful defense. Oops. Right, let's get this going faster. I'm more interested in the midpoint strategy. Because these last points, I mean, preferably if you're... Preferably if you're a good team, you just don't get put in these sort of positions. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, these last points are, you, are a lot of times very similar in terms of what they do. It's not that interesting. Okay, so let's see the positioning this time. Ooh, the scout's going to take some damage. So we got one scout below. Both soldiers are going to be coming out there. We got the left scout moving to basically watch this doorway. So that's good. But he may be put in the exact same position as before where a soldier and a scout shows up. Um, except that the demo does have intel on him. And he might get some damage off. So that would be good. Let's see how it plays out. All right, let's see what we got for positioning. So, um, one soldier has been picked, and actually, the, there we go. <laughs> one soldier, oh, 1v1 trade for the soldiers there. Um, blue is looking like they're going to get put in a similar position as before. This scout over here needs to respond, like, right away. If he was up here already he could reverse this sort of positioning by drawing attention of some of the enemies or getting a pick. But the problem is, is that red looks to be in a better position here to suppress blue team. They're probably going to be force them to fall back here. But let's see. So the, the blue scout does come up to look for a pick. That's great. Uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't work out. And the blue team loses four players. They're definitely going to have to fall back. Um, that positioning of theirs just looked weaker. I mean, they had they were all kind of in this little bit of an area. They were down a couple guys. That blue scout was too far back. If he would have already been up here, he could have done some serious damage or got a pick at this point, which would have drawn the attention to this side of the map. And these players could have gotten better positionings. That soldier could have moved along the side here. That meta could have got health. And the demo, I think it was the demo, right? He could have uh, just shot from doors or from window. They could have spread out a little bit more, try to keep it, um, you know, try to keep the red team on their toes in terms of where where their position's at. But unfortunately, they did not work out. <laughs> and I think I'm just going to speed it up because I actually have to get going pretty quick. Um... And this match is so one-sided anyway. It's not even really that exciting to finish. Uh, red team just basically comes in and dominates anyway. The only interesting thing to mention there was that, as you can see, they didn't get the spider cap right away. And that's because the when the medic and the soldier um, retreated, they actually pulled the attention of the red team down into the um, bottom area here where the health and the ammo is. And... Uh, they basically popped ubers on each other, delayed one another, and it was actually it actually worked out pretty nice in in favor of the blue team because they basically just stopped the spire cap because of that. Um, unfortunately, I don't think they do much with it just because they're not playing the best. If I uh, maybe they push out, I can't remember. But we can kind of just watch this play out quick. In case you're interested in who won, who wins, <laughs> which actually you already know because I told you. But red team overall just looks more dominant. I mean, they're they're getting uh, like as you can see from some of the from watching it, um, blue team just seems to get picked off more, and they're missing some critical shots. And yeah, that's it. Um, like I said, I mean, I just kind of wanted to go through because. That last bit's not that interesting. I don't, and I don't really want to talk about the last point cap right now anyway, because it's basically just blue team trying to hold, 
failing because red team just works up an uber and rushes in those midpoints though are very interesting to me because that's where so much i mean as you can see so much of the match is decided right there whoever got that midpoint which was red mostly they just were able to use that momentum to grab spire put blue team in a, a very defensive position and then take the round usually because they also had the uber advantage because they got picks um so yeah um hopefully that's helpful you know, pointing out some of what they did, what they didn't do, the positioning. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that uh, if you if you think about it in terms of how should I put this? Like in terms of probabilities, like you have a 50% chance of hitting the enemy in a 1v1 or something. A lot of it comes down then to positioning. So it's really important to watch demos like this and go through and look where, you know, like what worked, what didn't, where were people, did this work when this person was here? That positioning is so important to take into account because if the, the, the hit rates between players are generally very similar, you know, like say there's a 50-50, you have a 50-50 chance of hitting someone with your scatter gun as a scout, they probably have a very similar chance. So then it comes down to who has a better position, um, who can surprise the other teammates. So it's important to look at that. Um, but I will stop blabbing and wrap this up. So thank you very much for watching as always. Please consider subscribing above, um, liking below. Um, it always helps for getting videos found by other people. Um, what else? If you're interested in other behind the plays, I do it for Counter-Strike Global Offensive, League of Legends, um, there's Quake Live, I'm also going to do Smite, Guild Wars 2, I'll probably do some other random games that are on my Steam list, basically all sorts of strategy um, for figuring out games and being better at them and all that sort of stuff, so bleh, thanks for watching, see you next time.